You don't have to be a tropical ecologist to know when you're in the jungle. In actuality, the term jungle, and for that matter, rainforest, are generalized concepts, denoting a wide range of forest types. Interestingly, one's initial perception of the rainforest is what Thomas Lovejoy called a mass of green, or undifferentiated sameness. As we draw closer, however, we begin to notice details. Rainforests are often characterized by an abundance of palms and a rich variety of broad-leaved evergreens. Slender, unvegetated boles or trunks are also typical. Also part of the rainforest landscape are massive trees, many with buttressed bases. Gaps are a critical part of rainforest dynamics. These open spaces, caused by tree falls and other natural and man-made disturbances, provide sunlight and thus opportunity both for plants and for animals. This brown basilisk lizard is using a fallen log in the gap to display to potential mates. Cecropia trees are common gap colonizers, and their umbrella-shaped foliage is a familiar sight in the Neotropics. Fast-growing pioneers, Cecropias provide flowers and fruit for a variety of animals. From the forest floor to the canopy, a progression of flowering herbs, shrubs, and trees are characteristic of rainforests. The pipers are a group commonly seen in the understory, as are the brightly colored bracts of heliconias. Each inflorescence, a world of its own. Besides providing a nectar source for a wide variety of rainforest animals, many flowering plants set nutritious fruit. These fruits serve the plant as an inducement to seed dispersal and provide a critical energy source for many birds and mammals. Vines, lianas, and other climbers are abundant in rainforests. The strangler fig, also known as the tree killer, enwraps its host in a deadly hug that eventually replaces the original tree altogether. Most vines, however, are more benign, using their hosts for a lift to the light above. Some appear like free-hanging artwork. Others as though painted on a background. One of the more characteristic features of neotropical forests are epiphytes. Epiphytes comprise a vast array of mostly non-parasitic plants that make their home on the trunks and branches of trees. Occasionally, we see a single epiphyte, such as this young bromeliad, or this cactus. More commonly, a veritable garden of epiphytic orchids, bromeliads, lichens, and mosses festoon their host. Many orchids are epiphytic and show special adaptations for this lifestyle. Note this orchid's bulbous stem that acts as a water storage tank. Orchids are simply exquisite, offering an unsurpassed visual feast. Here is one of the ephemeral orchids, whose blossoms last a single day. Orchids are a lifelong passion for some naturalists, 
and it is easy to understand why. The orchid's structures and hues, however, have more to do with the passions of bees than the interest of humans. Some orchids and bees have co-evolved in a way that benefits both organisms. Another group of epiphytes are bromeliads, all members of the pineapple family. This is yet another diverse tropical group with approximately 2,000 species. Like other epiphytes, bromeliads have taken to the trees to increase their allotment of potential sunlight. Not being rooted in terra firma, however, raises the issues of water storage and access to nutrients. One answer is the bromeliad's rosette design, an effective shape for catching and trapping water, as well as airborne nutrients. So what about the rain in rainforests? True rainforests record large amounts of rain throughout the year. Moist lowland rainforests have distinct dry and wet seasons. Fortunately for the tempered zone traveler, the dry season more or less coincides with our winter, although seasonal rains vary with latitude. Rainforest vegetation displays many adaptations to the copious rain, including drip-tipped leaves that aid in shedding water. Copious rain is a fact of life in the tropics and a critical factor in the very nature of these extraordinary places. Lowland rainforests are the most productive natural places on Earth. Largely unseen processes transform the sun's energy into an astonishing variety of living organisms. Here, sunlight becomes orchids. Costa Rica alone, a country the size of West Virginia, has over 800 species of birds, more than all of North America. For the naturalist, the opportunities in the tropics are endless.